greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here, isn't it? Well, it's it's an amazing thing. It's amazing because uh, we are almost at the end of October. It's time to harvest and you know what? Halloween is upon us and there is nothing but being spooky than being spooked by what? <laughs> Facebook itself. So I was trying to log in and uh, believe it or not, Facebook was not allowing me. And so, you know what? It's called spookiness. So, hi. <laughs> It's Lisa Bavari, your expert hypnotherapist and coach, hypno coach. It's so good to be here, isn't it? Today I have an incredible guest, a guest who, um, a guest who I truly admire, someone who I have even been coached by, and so. I'm going to invite him in right now. Ah, turn around. <laughs> there we go. Gotcha. Gotcha. I, I apologize. <laughs> All right. So how does it look? Are, are we are we good to go or? We are on. We're you... online already. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. I just I just <laughs> listen. I just pop in. That's what I do. <laughs> you know. Oh, you gotta love it. We tried logging in, logging in, logging in. So for the last 10 minutes and Zoom and Facebook mm. was not working. So yes. you went <laughs> on and we're, mm. we'll talk about him also. And sure. so I thought might as well go live. I'm back on Facebook yeah. and see if I can get in. I got in and I'm like, mm. okay, now what do I do? When he comes in, he's that's mm. when I will introduce him. And the moment I said, I've got an incredible guest, my mentor, <laughs> coach, you just pop in. So there, there we go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. it. Sometimes technology is so difficult to work with, right? <laughs> um, Murphy's Law says, uh, things just happen to go wrong at the at the inopportune time or what we consider to be the right time. So uh, I'm exactly. glad we tried it. We we it, it didn't work. We got back in and here we are. So timing is everything. Timing is absolutely everything. I love it. I love it. But isn't that what life is all about, Karim? It's it's a series of it's a series of orchestrated steps in timing. I, I that is something I I live here and I live here. Timing is everything. Some of my greatest successes was based on timing based on time and being the right place at the right time. Absolutely. Exactly. And so for all my viewers, I'd like to introduce my guest, Karim uh, R. Ellis, a dynamic powerhouse speaker with over 10 years of experience in the field of speaking, training, coaching, and breakthrough success for not only companies and corporations, but individuals. Karim mm. is also a member of the National Speakers Association and past president of Toastmasters, which is dear to my heart. I was a part of Toastmasters for many years. Uh, Karim is also a member of the John Maxwell team and as Les Brown platinum speaker and protege, which you just got the call from Les. That's yes. why she became a priority <laughs> then here. Hey, listen. Well, less calls you answer. <laughs> <laughs> I That's know. the only way I can say it, right? Yeah. I know. Yeah. Exactly. So it is so good to have you here, Kareem. Absolutely. It is an honor and a privilege. Absolutely. Oh. I'd like to start with this book. Oh, that looks very familiar. <laughs> really? <laughs> it that guy on the cover is handsome. <laughs> Well, actually, you know, this is a great picture. And for thank those you. who do not know, you are more handsome in person than on this. Oh, thank you. In this square. <laughs> oh, flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> I gotta love okay. it. Oh, man. I gotta love it. Oh, the day that we met, 
It was mm -hmm. at Manny Lopez's Network of mm. Influence, what, yes. a year ago? It was a year ago. It was, this, yeah, December. We're, we're coming up on an anniversary. Absolutely, out in California. Yes, yes, yes. powerful, powerful, yes. Yes, and I know I was having issues with my camera before I went on stage to speak, and you said, okay, you can use this. And afterwards, yes. I came and said, can I have a picture with you? I was mesmerized. <laughs> with your storytelling mm. and then have to find out that not only you are a mm -hmm. toastmaster speaker but les brown's mm -hmm. protege and you're going to be doing mm. incredible stuff with les and i can't mm -hmm. wait for that but yes your book <laughs> bps to my success mm. tell us a little bit about it because you know mm -hmm. we all have a gps in our car Yes. But I love the way this book is and how mm. you come to talk about from the time that you were 14 years old and it's like you mm. knew about it. How many people in their 30s or 40s don't even know where they're going? Mm. So that is a very, very, very good question. That's what I love so much about you, Lisa. Um, I, I tell people all the time, the quality of the question determines the quality of the result. And I'm going to repeat that because I need everyone watching this broadcast to understand this. The quality of the question you ask will always determine the quality of the result. The reason why people don't have more, they don't achieve more, they can't do more, they can't be more, they spend their time walking through life asking the wrong questions. Mm. You're going to get the answer based on what you specifically ask. So it's important that we know how to ask the right questions to get the right results. And you, my friend, you are full of nothing but the right questions. You are um, a powerhouse when it comes to asking the right questions. And I know you're someone who wants results and you're, you're results driven oriented. Okay. So one of the things that challenged me as a young child was the fact that no one tells you to chase your purpose. Mm. No one asks you, why are you here out of so many people walking the planet, close to 9 billion people at this point in time. You are blessed to be one of us. You are here amongst us. You get up every day. You put your shoes on one shoe at a time. You go out there. You're a productive member of society. What's the reason why I'm here? If I've been given unique gifts and talents, if I have a skill set or an expertise, what's the reason out of 9 billion people that gift landed with me, that talent landed with me? And more importantly, what am I supposed to do with it? As a child growing up, we're taught to chase education. We're taught to chase money, to chase relationships, to settle down and get married, to get the house with the picket fence, the two-car garage, the three kids, the two dogs. We're taught to chase things that have the symbolism of success. Correct. But no one sat down and said, Kareem, Ray Ellis, why are you here? What's your reason for existence? In other words, if your life gets cut short tomorrow, who's going to suffer because you didn't feel the piece on the puzzle that you were designed to fit, that you were custom designed to do? The gift, the talent, the expertise, I gave that to you to accomplish something, to be something of standard to individuals out there that may get lost on their journey along the way. The second thing is, uh, uh, what I've learned is this, a lot of times what we're called to respond to is the very thing God has enabled us to go through. And I'll say that again. A lot of times what we're called to, the problem we've been put here specifically to answer and solve is a mixture of what we have gone through. So one of the things I talked to you about earlier, I talked to you about the aspect of uh, snake venom. That if I get bit by a king cobra and they administer me to an ER, they can't give me just any anti-venom to save my life. They have to know the specific snake that bit me. And they have to use anti-venom that's composed of the original snake bite venom mixed wow. with antibodies. If they give me anything different, there's a chance the toxin may not work and it may kill me. Mm -hmm. So why I'm saying this to the listeners is you have to understand, you have to understand something. What God has allowed you to go through and grow through, I'm gonna say that again, go through and grow through because if it was designed to take you out, my friend, you wouldn't be here right now. You would not be here right now. The idea being is whatever bit you in life, your job is to be the walking, a, a walking, talking epiphany of anti-venom. That means so the folks I draw to me. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what go ahead. What you're saying is the pains that we are going through, the suffering yes. that people are going through, it's, it's not... It, it's not because of 
circumstances, but mm. their doing, their choice. Yes, yes. Here, here's the thing. I'm coming up on the anniversary of getting shot back in 2015. My anniversary date of taking a nine millimeter round to my right leg was November, November 3rd, 2015. Wow. I made it through that situation. Even though I was shot and wounded, there wasn't a moment that I really doubted that my life was going to come to an end at that moment because I understood the calling on my life. I understood I have a lot more work to do. This is not my season to check out. However, the lessons learned from that situation and circumstances have been applied to better other people going through a similar journey. And that's the most powerful thing about being speakers, yourself included, are messages as well needed medication for those that are going through a setback or a struggle. Uh, something uh, Delator McNeil said to me many years ago that you are the prescription for somebody's pain. How mm. long are you going to let them wait? You are the prescription for somebody's pain. How long are you going to let them wait? There are people listening to this call right now that have stories that are supposed to be inside of books. There are messages, yes. coaching programs. There are nonprofits that are supposed to be started up. And you are the powerful prescription that God has allowed to be written for someone to take two of you a day and get better and heal and move forward and chase their best version of their life. But until you decide to become the prescription for someone else's pain, the question is, how long are you going to allow them to wait? That's the real question. Mm. Well, I think uh, I even in my website, I say this was my calling. Mm -hmm. This is not, this mm. was not my choice. Yes, yes, yes. The, the thing I've learned about callings is this. Um, a calling is something that you discover. Correct. And most people haven't figured that out. You typically discover a calling. And a lot of times you discover it by accident. When I fell into love of motivational, inspirational, and breakthrough speaking, I didn't design my life off the bat with GPS, my success, thinking that was the arena I was going to walk into. As a child growing up, I was going to school to be a doctor. Mm. <laughs> Believe it or not, I was going to medical school to be a doctor. I actually dropped out because I can't stand the sight of blood. I'm the person where if you come into the ER with an eight-inch gash across your forehead and white meat oozing and leaking out, I'm going to pass out. I can be of no help to you. You're going to die from loss of blood and I'm going to be passed out and sued for negligence. So that was not my calling in any way, shape or form. My calling was tied to why I, um, why I love the idea of being a doctor. The only mm -hmm. reason I love the idea of being a doctor is what a doctor does. A doctor helps people Correct. every single day. As a speaker traveling all over the world, nationally, internationally, I help people every single day. When you are walking out your passion and walking out your purpose and your calling, you never wake up and want to retire from it. You never wake up and say, I got to take a vacation from it. I can go on vacation and still feel the need and urge to jump on a Facebook Live or put out a motivational meme or insight or whatever have you, because my calling is attached to me here and attached to me here. And if you're getting up eight hours a day, working eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, and you don't feel that in your heart, my friend, I got to tell you, you are possibly not walking in your purpose, your passion, and your calling. And in the year 2020, the year of perfect vision, clear sight, there are some changes you're going to make to your life. Simple as that. True, true. Mm. So as far as the GPS for so many mm -hmm. of us, um, what's mm -hmm. been your breakthrough? And how mm. did you go? And I, for those who are watching, um, I've been practicing as a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant for over 20 years. Yes. And having a mentor like Kareem helped mm. me because I was talking about the modalities that I use, everything mm. that I do with my three E, which is evoking, embracing, evolving. You helped me become more clear, not only mm. the way I speak and the storytelling mm. of it, but you made me clear I and mean, you put it, packaged it in a way and coached it mm. that I help my clients. You said, what is it that we do is mm. helping them go from pain to gain, tapping, yes. having that mindset, tapping into their subconscious mind, because that's where our power is. So yes. I want to know what has been your best and worst mm. time in your life that your mm -hmm. internal GPS has guided you where you are today? Mm, that is a very loaded question, and I love it. You, Like I said, you're a thinker. I, I love that. You are a thinking person. That thinking cap is on right now. Um, so I'm going to cover this very quickly. 
uh, by allocating to two chapters in the book. Mm-hmm. Soft plug, okay? Um, the first chapter of the book and why I decided to use the chapter, um, everything starts with vision. One of my favorite scriptures in the book of life says, write the vision and make it plain. And this is going to be a loaded answer because oh. I'm talking about chapter one and I'm talking about chapter two. So this lets me know when I was put here on the planet, I was not here put, I was not put here by accident. I was put here on purpose, with purpose, by purpose, for purpose. As the old folks would say, you have been knocked up or pregnant with purpose. The goal being before your time is up is what are you supposed to give birth to in life's delivery room? What are you supposed to be pushing out and giving birth to that you're supposed to share with the world? So uh, getting knocked up starts here in the mind. Mm. Getting knocked up starts here in the mind. I refer to the mind as the womb of the mind. That means that um, in order to get pregnant, there has to be an egg inside of here. That egg is the seed of thought. Y'all hang with me. I'm going someplace. It's a seed of thought. That seed has to be, that seed has to be fertilized. A lot of times your fertilization process will come through who you hang with. Who are you studying? Who are you running with? Jim Rohn said it best. He said, your life will mirror that of the five people you hang with the most. So if I'm having intimate conversations, and I'm not talking sexual conversations. Let's take the pervertedness out of this call. I'm talking intimate conversations where I'm mingling with someone that has access to what I want to do. I'm shadowing them. I'm watching them and I'm engaged in conversation. It's a matter of time before their thoughts impregnate my mental seed. And then as it germinates, I'm ready to give birth. When I get around Les Brown, Les Brown impregnates the seed of my mind. And so now I'm ready to give birth. I'm ready to walk some things out. I'm ready to produce product and content and conquer stages all over the world. So key number one, is I have to have the seed here. No, number two, I have to find out who's going to impregnate my mindset. Now, for me, when I say set the vision and make it plain, another word for plain is clarity. Another word for plain is clarity. So I want you to understand the GPS concept. A GPS is absolutely useless until you decide to give it an address. The biggest mm-hmm. problem I saw in my life up until the age of 26 I was walking around with no address inside my life's GPS. So I was entertaining everything and anything that came across my pathway. Let me paint the picture a different way. Until I have vision of where I want to go in life, I don't know what to do with the money I receive. I can get a paycheck every two weeks. I can get a stimulus check for $1,200. I can get an income tax. But unless I have a vision associated with what to do with the money or how to use the money as a tool, because money is a tool. And until you understand that, you will not build the empire God is asking you to build in this season. When I understand the vision, now I can allocate the money properly to build the things I need to build to create multiple streams of income. And so I set vision. I don't even know what education I should be going after. The problem with us right now is we've been taught to go after a bunch of education where Napoleon Hill and Thinking Grow Rich teaches us to go after specialized knowledge. So if my game plan was to escape the nine to five job and real estate was going to be the tool to do it, I need to spend my time learning how to flip houses, figure out comparable sales, how to get deals to the finish line, how to market, because that's the tool of my future that's going to get my escape to walk away from my situation that I'm not supposed to be in. Many of us are not chasing our vision because we've been bogged down by things that we've allowed to slow us down. So that's why it's so important to set up vision. Vision correlates to every resource I need, but the second thing is clarity. And the problem with most people is you cannot conquer what you won't confront. The reality for most of us, we don't even know what we should be trying to take out in this season. And that's what I was going to say. Right. That's exactly what I was going to say, because not everybody has this kind of a vision to be an entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. to be a speaker and everything. But the Mm -hmm. the simplest thing that they have in mind in what they want to do, they want to graduate university or they want to do this. It's the why. Yes. Yes. It's always the why. The why is the most powerful driving force you can attach to any goal or dream. It's not the how. One of the things I learned at an early age was the difference between why and how. When you look at a complicated math problem, two plus two times six, in parentheses, another two equals, immediately you think about the how to, the delicate dance steps of, I know I got to do the parentheses first, and then I got to do this, and I got to multiply. But if I haven't learned that type of algebra, if I haven't learned that equation, I can't finish that dance. So immediately my brain's going to shut down. The teacher calls me to the front. I can't answer that because I don't know how to make that problem work. 
So it's not about the how-to. The how-to is stop more people from chasing their personal greatness than anything else. You always want to anchor your goals and dreams to a very, very clear, powerful reason why. Why taps into your emotional center? If I have a strong enough reason why this has to happen, no devil in hell, no closed door, no setback, no lack of funds, no lack of money, no lack of companionship, no lack of mentors going to stop me in my time of need. And I've gone through all of that just to get to this stage of the game. I've gone through a season of setback where I hit to anchor my success to a why, not a how. If I focus on the why, the how-to will manifest itself in the journey and make its way known. But this is the importance of clarity. If you are chasing a goal and dream and there's no clarity behind what that dream looks like, it's almost impossible for you to program your subconscious mind to not only create an obsession to go after it, but to identify it when it pops up. Let's take my Porsche, for instance, because folks that know me know I'm a Porsche fan. Yes, you a are. Porsche enthusiast, right? Um, when I was searching for my Porsche, that didn't happen overnight. I knew the make, I knew the model, I knew the year, I knew the malice, I knew what the interior looked like. I had such a vivid image painted in my mind that I got up every morning looking online for my car. So when I saw it and I recognized it, I canceled all my appointments. I got a rental car and I drove set six hours one way to go buy my car cash and bring that baby back home. Why? Because I was moving in a spirit of clarity. For some of the people on this call right now, the reason why they're not achieving results, the reason why it looks like they are unlucky and everyone else is getting opportunity and you're not is because you are not clear about the very thing that you want in this season. The more clear you are about what you want, the easier it is to go after it. That's why GPS gives you instructions and crystal clear clarity. There's nothing confusing uh, about those instructions. Hey, if we add GPS, <laughs> my success mm -hmm. with mm. hypnosis that takes you mm. and you zone into it, you live it, you feel it, you taste it, you know it. And that's yes. how we shift from where mm -hmm. we are. Because even in the work that I do, when my clients come mm. and say, this is not I no longer want to feel this. I say mm -hmm. it's not what we don't want, but what it is Ooh. that we want in life. Yes. Yes. Being yes. clear yes. of how <laughs> I want to feel when I drop the weight or when I stop mm. smoking, which November 19th is our stomp on smoking event. So whoever knows anyone or is ready to stop smoking, by all means, I'm having a <laughs> Zoom event. But mm. With all that is going on in the world, mm. not only in America, globally, in 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 the Armenian, uh, in Armenia, with all this mm -hmm. everything, yes. Scream. How do we come to care for one another more? Ooh, that's that's another loaded question. There you go, thinking again. <laughs> I don't know, it just comes. There to you go, me. thinking again. Well, here's the thing. Um, we know we are in one of the most trying seasons of most of our lives. I don't, there's not too many people, and I want to say this delicately because I know we are all different ages. So some of us are old enough to have seen some stuff. We don't seen some stuff in our lifetime. But for many of us, especially the millennials, uh, and this, they ain't seen nothing like this. This is right. wow. I, I refer to it as the open, unfinished game of Jumanji. It's like we all sat down to play the game. We rolled the dice and all hell started breaking loose. And then someone got up and walked away and left us trapped at level seven. Like, dude, come back, finish the game. We got to get out of here before 2021 arrives, right? Uh, so the issue being is this. I think when it comes to caring about other people, and I can use a GPS mindset for it, again, it boils back to vision. It boils back to vision. I think that not only in the Armenia uh, uh, region, uh, but even here locally in the States, um, we're, we're moving in a state of confusion. We're moving in a state of confusion. And remember what I said earlier, clarity versus confusion. It's hard to hit a target you don't know what you're aimed for. Now, there's a lot of reasons for that. You know, uh, This country and the world in general, there's been a jaded history where healing is not properly taking place. And you already know in your line of work how important it is to heal properly. When I look at this planet and this world, there are, there are traumatic events that have never been addressed. 
They have never been addressed, right? And so if we want healing as people, if we want healing as nation, if we want healing as a planet, we got to go back to where some of that damage was done and do our best to rectify it. Mm -hmm. What I said earlier about GPS My Success, the address determines the destination. So what I believe is going to take place or has to take place with everybody, with everybody. Everyone has to unify uh, on a unified front decide the most important thing to do is to put the right address inside the GPS because the, the, the destination is determined by the address. If we want healing as a country, if we want healing as a nation, if we want healing as a world, that's a matter of everybody saying it's important to get to this destination. But right now, what I see is I see a bunch of different individuals dividing themselves by race, by, by gender, by sexual preference. Uh, the enemy has done a wonderful job on using the things that we think divide us more than the things that actually tie us together. At the end of the day, love. which is love. At the end of the day, if, if, if I cut myself and I'm wounded and I need a blood transfusion and I want to live, man, I'm looking at you. I don't care about your color. I don't care exactly. about your belief. I don't care about your background because we're interchangeable. You don't see a cheetah mating with anything else than a cheetah. You don't see a lion mating with anything else than a lion. You don't see a hyena mating with anything else than a hyena. We are built and designed by God to be compatible. And when we understand there's more that unifies us than divides us, and we have a mindset that we want to be of one mind and one sound and one progression where no one is left behind, then we're entering a situation or a circumstance. I'm laughing because let's just call it. Um, <laughs> We're entering a situation in a circumstance where we're going to see this world move forward in the right light. We're going to see it happen. We move forward in the right light. But we have to discard the things that we consider to be our difference makers. We all chase green and we all bleed red. That's it at the end of the day. If I need a blood transfusion, I ain't particular about who hook, hook it up to my veins, doc. <laughs> I need to live. I got some stuff to do. I'm not particular about that until the world understands that. And the problem with this is there are a lot of changes that have to take place. Right. We've created a comfort zone on this planet and a lot of people are benefiting from the current state of affairs, the current comfort zone. And so that's the reason why change is coming so slowly because a lot of folks that are benefiting from the comfort zone are having to kind of pass away or die mm -hmm. off and a new generation has to come forward. So that has to be the agenda uh, something I learned from watching the movie Drumline, one band, one sound. There's more that unifies us than divides us. But it's scriptural that, you know, the golden rule means not the person that makes the gold makes the rules. The golden rules is treat my neighbor like I want to treat myself. If I don't want to see myself go through any type of turmoil, I would not want to see my neighbor do it either. True. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. Um. We're almost coming to the end. This has been <laughs> riveting. Mm. As always, you and I, when we get on the call, uh, yes. one question can be <laughs> 20 minutes. It, it, uh, yes. Right? So one question. Sure. When you think about a coach, mm. what do you believe is the characteristics of a good therapist or a good coach? Oh, wow. Okay. You, these questions, man. <laughs> this is what, because here's the thing. A lot of times we do interviews and the questions are kind of known to kind of scripted. So we know what territory we're going to walk into. So I love kind of the, the, the ones that are on the spot that cause you to think on the spot. That's the beauty of being a speaker. Uh, so when I think about a coach or therapist, um, I can tackle this a couple of different ways. I think about someone who, number one, has been where I want to go to. I think we live in a day and age in social media where we have a lot of people calling themselves an expert, um, but they ain't been around long enough to slice a full loaf of bread. I mean, through the age of social media and imagery, you know, we can create an image that we're doing this and we're really not doing this. And we've seen that flush out even more and more because we are in the, we're in the day and age of social media likes and shares, right? Not so much really healing and helping, but likes and shares. Pay attention to me. I'm doing this, 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 and third. So when I think about a good coach and a good mentor, they are an individual, number one, who's been where I'm trying to go to. 
Okay. Not only do they have the victories, but more importantly than the victories, man, they have been through the setbacks. They have been through the challenges. They have met the losses, the defeats. They have, they've been at the brink of death on their goal and dream, and they figured out how to rebound off of it. Because here's the honest truth, and I can say this about anyone who I've been mentored by. I can say it about who I've poured into. Um, your success impresses me. But I'm more impressed by what you made it through successfully. I'm more impressed by the challenges and the hurdles you made over. Because if I follow your pathway, I got to know what I'm in for. Mm. If I decide to pick up the journey and pick up the mantle and go where you're trying to go to, I got to be ready to understand this is how you tackled this. This is how you got over on this. This is how you saw your way around this. And this is how this worked out. So when I think of a good coach and mentor, it's someone who's walked the walk, talked the talk, and most importantly, they're open enough to share with me what their challenges are, what their setbacks are, so I can plan for my best future as I step forward after my goal, my dream, and more importantly, my destiny. I love it. I love it. Bingo. I love it. <laughs> Nowadays, my feed on my Facebook is like, mm. apparently, there's coaches that are being, I'm attracted to coaches that yeah. the Facebook, it's like, mm -hmm. there are more coaches that yes. and hypnotherapists that yes. go and learn something for two weeks mm -hmm. they come and call themselves i'm a hypnotherapist yes or, i'm a coach um yeah. or a coach of relationships and i ask mm -hmm. were you married <laughs> were you divorced <laughs> you know it's yeah it's, it's it, you, you're spot on what i tell everyone to do is do your homework it's amazing to me how many people will decide to make a $200 purchase on amazon.com, right? But before they make the purchase, they're looking through 822 reviews and stars. Before I spend my money, let me double check and see what all 800 people have to say about it before I make a decision. We will make more uh, research on an Amazon purchase than we do with a coach or mentor. We won't try to Google them. We won't try to search them out. We won't try to see if they got any students that can show validity or success. The rule of thumb is this. If I plant seed inside of you, at some stage of the game, you should produce a harvest. If I plant seed inside of you and the soil is good, at some stage of the game, this seed is supposed to produce a harvest in the results of your success, be it financial, be it getting on stages, be it crushing it in the coaching industry, whatever have you. There should be a byproduct that comes out, a harvest that I can reach up and pick fruit from and eat off of. And the beautiful thing is inside every piece of fruit is additional seed. So if you're not seeing that result in the coach or mentor, I'm going to tell you, you might be trying to pick fruit from the wrong tree. That's, that's all I can say about that. You got to know whether or not there's seed or whether it's bad, rotten fruit, you know, and evil or rotten fruit, you know, I can angle the apple. <laughs> I can angle the apple so you can't see the rotten side on the back of it. You, you got to do your homework. Number one, are they Googleable? If you type them into a search engine, what pops up? That's that's the main thing for me. True. And then number two, I got to figure out who has dealt with this individual before I make that assessment or that judgment call. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. So for all our viewers, for those who mm. are interested in purchasing this book, believe it or not, mm. we have it on our healwithin.com shop. There we go. <laughs> we, you need to know this. I didn't know that. <laughs> There's a lot of things. See, this is the beauty of even stomping, yes. a, not necessarily stomping, but uh, surprising your own coach mm. with things that he is not <laughs> expecting because none of this has been rehearsed. You didn't even know that I am offering your book on my website. And this is one no thing problem. I started is like, mm -hmm. if I, if I like a book, if there is like mm -hmm. my one habit book that it is now sure. the number one bestseller with Stephen yes. and Forbes Riley. I mean, yeah. It's a small world, but when you get to that level to be with the bestsellers, the book writers, the, mm -hmm. the coaches of the coaches with Les Brown, mm -hmm. Manny, and you, I mean, what we are doing is creating a stage and mm -hmm. an arena to impact mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. people and help them yes. heal within. That's what I yes. Or I, I love it. them to success. Yes. <laughs> I love it. 
I, you know, you know, I love that name. You and I'm not talking about mine. I'm talking about yours. You know, I love that concept. I'm, I'm a wordsmith, so I love putting words together to see how they flow. So I love stuff like that. You already know it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a word geek. Yes. <laughs> I want to thank you, Kareem, for it's being my here, for saying yes, mm -hmm. for your guidance, mm -hmm. for your support, and hopefully we mm -hmm. can do other things with less. Um, mm. To close this mm -hmm. segment. Would yes. you please complete the sentence? Lisa sure. Bubari is. <laughs> Lisa Bubari is. Woo! Listen, <laughs> you're you going to give me the heart one of the way out the door, right? Um, so this is what I see when I see you. And this is profound for me because, like I said, as a, as a speaker, a teacher, a trainer, a coach, breakthrough strategist, God has strategically placed me all over this world as a staging, a staging game. And I've been blessed to pour into, um, teach, train, coach, help pull out um, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And there are certain ones that take a place in your heart here and in your mindset here. There's certain ones you look at and you just know that they got it. They, they got that it factor, they got it. And if my day was the end tomorrow, we're not speaking that to existence. Don't, 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 don't take me out this yet. We got stuff to do. Um, I know in my heart of hearts, you're gonna be fine. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, I know the gist of who you are, what you stand for. The message is powerful. The impact is powerful. So what I'm going to do is this. The way I'm going to answer this question for you is this. I, can't, I don't think I can sum you up with one word or a sentence. <laughs> um, one of my favorite games is the game of chess. Mm. And on chess, there are two important pieces on the board. The first important piece is the king. Okay? Whether we know it or not, the game of chess ends when the king is put in checkmate. So the whole game revolves around wiping out uh, opposition that's blocking me from putting the king in checkmate, but more importantly, not letting the king get put in checkmate because once this piece is removed, the game is over. So right. this is the most important piece, but the most valuable piece on the board is the queen. The most valuable piece on the board is the queen because the queen can perform more moves than any piece on the board. When I look at Lisa and I look at Lisa's success, the challenges, all that you've gone through, you remind me of this piece right here. There are so many moves inside of you that to win any game, the moves you make are the things that anybody needs to utilize success in their life, whether it's past tense issues, present tense issues, or more importantly, forging our way to our fantastic future. So when I look at you, my dear, I celebrate you as a queen. And what I would tell you is never run out of moves. There's so much inside of you uh, that the world has yet to experience. But my dear, I know it in my heart from looking over this best-selling book that you've got out to everything you're doing in your brand from pain to gain. Uh, my concept is show the world just how many moves you have to make. And that's the best thing I can say about you from the heart. Show the world your moves. Show them your moves. I love you're you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you're just saying that because i buttered you up no I, I oh my god no i'm saying that because of the yes. moment you buttered me with that mm -hmm. hug we did and yes. again uh <laughs> congratulations on your marriage and everything yes. that you, you have gone through for being where mm -hmm. you are uh i take my Absolutely. hat off to you and i look forward to many many mm -hmm. more uh collaborations mm -hmm and absolutely coaching and so much more absolutely absolutely i want to add one last thing before you wrap this up and of this course. is for someone that we don't know that is probably watching this call right now yes um, i want you to understand what's being given to me in the spirit is if you're watching this and you didn't plan to watch this you just happen to be in the right place at the right time i want you to understand there's no such thing as accident as Les taught me, accidents are God's way of remaining anonymous. What God has done for me and what God has done for you and many people that have walked this pathway prior to us, the greats from yesteryear, God will expose you to your calling by putting mm -hmm. around people that are doing the very thing you've been called to do for a season such as this. So if you're watching this right now and you have been unsettled, you can't sit still and you're bopping around and there's a spirit of excitement or emotion and you can't understand it, all I'm saying to you is now is your time. Decide to plant the seed. Now is your time. My God. <laughs> I, I, 
this is the thing. You always have to be in tune to what the spirit tells you. There have been times I've given keynote speeches that I was going to give. And before I hit the stage, he said, nope, we're doing something totally different. And you just have to move in the flow of what's given to you. So I'm always suspectful of that because my job is to be the conduit. My job is just to let the message flow to me through whoever is supposed to hear. So I don't know who you are, but my spirit got hit. I'm being told to tell you now is your time. Make Amen. the move. Make the move. And we will have all your information right here. And mm -hmm. for those who want to be in touch with uh, with you, uh, all they mm -hmm. have to do is go to Kareem or, uh, KareemEllis.com. That's it right there. KareemEllis.com. And everything you need will be bow right there in front of your face. Right. <laughs> Again, thank you. This has been incredible. Thank you for all mm -hmm. our viewers and for those mm. of you who I had not met, and today was mm -hmm. our first time. May mm. God bless you and the universal mm -hmm. light surround you. Mm. Goodbye. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.